the Australian submarine HMS Oxley was doomed to become the first Allied submersible sunk during World War II. While on patrol off the coast of Norway, the Odin-class submarine was abruptly attacked as she peacefully recharged her batteries on the surface. The vessel had been deployed as part of the Royal Navy's 5th Submarine Flotilla. At that moment, she was positioned in formation with the rest of the unit, never suspecting an attack. The sounds of the explosion ripped through the air. An ominous cloud of black smoke began to clamber across the sky, just as a Terry oil spill soiled the water around the ship. Fellow British submarine HMS Triton rushed to the scene and discovered that only three submariners had made it to the surface and were fighting to survive amid the debris, fire, and smoke. The overwhelming attack led to a major controversy back in Britain. For some reason, the actual events that led to the catastrophe were kept under wraps, and there were several versions of what happened. The Royal Navy fiercely guarded the truth for years, only to be revealed more than a decade later. Troubled Past When they were launched in the mid-1920s, HMS Oxley and Otway were the jewels in the crown of the Australian Royal Navy. Australia had ordered the groundbreaking vessels in 1924 in an ambitious attempt to modernize its naval force to 20th century standards. The British Odin-class design was a colossal step forward in submarine technology, in contrast to the old World War I-era L-class submarines it was replacing. The novel vessels could dive deeper, sail farther, and carry more firepower than their predecessors. Additionally, the Odin-class ships were the first British submarines to come equipped with the emerging ASDIC sonar technology and VLF radio for usage at periscope depth. After being commissioned, the two Australian submarines made a grand entrance into Sydney Harbour on February 14, 1929, to be proudly displayed before the gathering masses as a prime example of Australian naval power. However, the pride and excitement weren't meant to last. As the world sank deeper into the dark recesses of the Great Depression, a series of structural flaws would seal the fate of the recently acquired Australian submarines. During their first major operation, Oxley and Otway were temporarily deployed with the Royal Navy's 5th Submarine Flotilla, and in 1928, they sailed from Australia to conduct the most extended unescorted voyage assigned to any British submarine. Halfway through the journey, the crew aboard Otway discovered a series of threatening cracks across her engine columns. Both submarines made an emergency detour into Malta, where the repair crews also found significant cracking in Oxley's columns. After the vessels were fit to sail, they departed for Sydney but continued to show structural issues, and the depression-struck Australian government decided to put the submarines on reserve. With Australia's financial situation not improving and the ongoing cost of maintaining the ships, the Australian Royal Navy decided to offer Oxley and Otway to the British Royal Navy, and they were transferred and commissioned on April 10, 1931. Wrong place at the wrong time. For the next eight years, Oxley became part of the Royal Navy's 5th Submarine Flotilla, where she served in mostly uneventful patrols in the Northern Sea. By the summer of 1939, when the odds of a new large-scale conflict in Europe became all but a certainty, Oxley was transferred to the Royal Navy's second submarine flotilla in preparations for the incoming war. The situation then moved at breakneck speed. Germany invaded Poland on September 1st, and Britain dealt an ultimatum to the Third Reich, demanding their retreat or risk an all-out war. By the time the deadline expired on September 3rd, five submarines of the second flotilla, including HMS Triton and HMS Oxley, were already patrolling the Obrestad line off Norway. Britain then declared war, and the submarines were put on combat alert. On September 10, 1939, just after 7 p.m., HMS Oxley surfaced to recharge her batteries. Unbeknownst to the crew and Captain Harold G. Bowerman, the submarine had drifted drastically away from its assigned position, and it had surfaced dangerously close to the operation site of HMS Triton. Soon after, Triton also surfaced to recharge her batteries. Triton's commander, Lieutenant Commander Steele, felt at ease and decided to go below deck, leaving an officer on watch in charge of the bridge. Forty minutes later, 
he was urgently called as the crew had spotted a suspicious object in the water. Steele prepared for the worst-case scenario and dashed full steam ahead. He then ordered his crew to ready torpedo tubes 7 and 8. As Triton drew closer to the target, Steele learned that the silhouette was definitely that of another submarine. Triton stopped at a safe distance. Steele didn't want to rush into a violent situation, and he knew Oxley was supposed to be nearby. Although this unidentified vessel was not near the site where Oxley was instructed to patrol, he believed a human error could have taken the ship off course. Disaster Strikes Commander Steele ordered his signalman to deliver an immediate challenge to the opposing vessel using Triton's box lamp. The crew member did as he was told, slowly and methodically, trying to hide his anxiousness at the perilous affair. Time seemed to dilate, the seconds dragged on for eons, and after twenty seconds of no response, Triton's crew looked at each other with palpable concern. Steele ordered a second challenge, but nothing happened. Meanwhile, Steele carefully studied the silhouette in the distance, vexed at the idea that it might be a friendly ship. However, he noticed it was trimmed down low and could not see the bow or general shape. He was also fairly certain the conning tower was not that of Oxley. Risking giving an enemy ship the upper hand, Steele threw one final challenge to the opposing submarine and ordered his crew to fire three green flares into the night sky, a significant message that could not be ignored. Fifteen seconds passed, and again there wasn't even the slightest response from the other side. Steele was now sure that he was facing a German U-boat, and ordered his torpedo men to fire at once. The projectiles darted through the water, leaving behind a menacing trail, and forty seconds later, a deafening explosion ripped through the air. One torpedo had found its target. A column of black smoke appeared on the horizon. As Triton approached to investigate, her crew could see a sinking wreck amid a growing oil spill. That's when Triton's crew heard cries for help, and they were in English. For a few seconds, the crew of the attacking submarine stood paralyzed by fear and surprise, but then they bolted into action. Using Triton's searchlight, the team revealed three British sailors swimming away from the debris, oil, and smoke. Sailors Guy Watkins and Harry Stacy immediately tied a rope around their torsos and dove into the murky waters to rescue their comrades. They were able to pull out Oxley's captain and a sailor. However, the third man, Lieutenant Manley, was suddenly swallowed by the sea before the rescuers could reach him. Neither his body nor that of any of the other 53 members of the Oxley's crew would be found. Hiding the Truth The humiliating disaster led to a broad investigation, and a board of inquiry assembled on board HMS Cochrane on September 23, 1939, where eleven witnesses, nine from Triton and two from Oxley, provided their accounts of the events of that day. After thoroughly evaluating the witnesses' accounts, it was concluded that a particularly strong current had thrown Oxley off course. Still, Oxley's navigator was assigned 10% of the blame for not using nearby landmarks to identify that his ship was out of position. The other 90% of the blame went to Lieutenant Manley, Oxley's watch officer in turn, who had failed to spot the numerous attempts by Triton to identify the submarine. The investigation revealed that at the last second, Manley had sighted Triton's signals and fired a flare that failed to ignite. After that, it was too late to make another attempt. Commander Steele and his crew were exonerated from any blame. The Board of Inquiry decided he did everything he could to identify his ship, and only resorted to an attack when all other options had been exhausted. Despite the detailed account of the events, the Royal Navy decided that revealing the disaster's truth would be detrimental to the Navy's reputation and the morale of the British people, especially so early in the war. As such, it was publicly claimed that Oxley had sunk after an unexpected malfunction caused a massive explosion inside her engine room. Years later, after the war had ended, the Royal Navy changed its story and admitted that Oxley had been in a freak accident involving a mid-ocean collision with Triton. The incident reportedly led to its sinking. It wouldn't be until the 1950s that the Navy finally revealed the truth about the loss of HMS Oxley and disclosed all the documents and accounts 
but confirmed the tragic series of events that led to the sinking of the first Allied submarine in World War II at the hands of a friendly vessel. Thank you for watching Dark Seas. For more wartime mysteries, epic battles, and the most groundbreaking weapons used on the front lines, tap on your screen and check out our other Dark Documentaries channels. We publish new content regularly, so don't hesitate to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and stay tuned for more.